الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم مبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته and good morning instagram fam friends and followers of asafi and welcome to you um on the final welcome to you or i'm welcoming you to the final installment of this week's series under the theme what sets islam apart from other faiths and the last few days we've been talking about um the primary distinguishing feature of the islamic faith and that is uh islamic its strict commitment or strict commitment to upholding the strictest form of islamic monotheism or the strictest form of monotheism islamic monotheism uh what i wanted to do today was uh, give a brief recap on what we covered and hit on a few points and the last few sessions were kind of long longer than i intended these segments to be but because of the importance of the topic uh, we were kind of compelled uh, to speak at some length about these issues uh, especially because as we mentioned in one of the segments um islamic monotheism is currently under siege and it's under siege not by uh the non-muslims this is to be expected but it's actually under siege by some uh muslims some muslim activists and some muslims with a great deal of celebrity and a large following uh that said let's get right to the recap and try to get you out here get out, get you in and out uh, a little bit uh, earlier than we have the past few days uh so basically as i said we've been talking about what sets islam apart from other faiths and this topic which we're going to spend some time on over the next uh, few days um uh, is important because as we kind of uh, el- alluded to it's important because mixing between other faiths one is un-islamic it's not permissible for us as muslims to take our faith and kind of take borrow things from other faiths and other philosophies and kind of like uh, mix that together and create a, a personalized faith which has some islamic elements and elements of other faiths and that's per- impermissible and we actually opened this series of segments this week with the uh aya or I'm sorry with the chapter from the Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the prophet to say la abudu ma ta'budun he told him to say to this believers i do not worship what you worship wala antum ta'bud wala antum abiduna ma abud and you do not worship what i worship you don't worship the way i worship nor do i worship the way you worship and then he told him in, uh, to con- to conclude that whole uh, presentation by saying lakum dinukum wa liya din you have your religion and i have mine and they're com- they are completely separate and distinct from one another they cannot be mixed together another reason why this mixing between faiths uh, is an important topic and it's important to avoid is because it adverse it adversely affects when we start mixing our faith with other faiths or elements of our faith with elements of other faiths it adverse adversely affects our commitment to islam it have, i mean if 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 we have one foot in one faith and one foot in our faith then we're not completely committed to our own faith and Allah wants us to be completely committed to Islam he says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu udkhulu fi silmi kafa o you who believe enter into Islam enter into Islam completely o you who believe enter into Islam completely and one last reason what that makes this topic that we're discussing and we'll continue to discuss very important is because mixing between other faiths adversely affects the quality of our Islam we're, brothers and sisters as we have these discussions what's 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 one of the underlying motivations for these discussions is because some of us in the convert community many of us in fact and beyond the convert community I'm sorry convert community muslims in general are struggling they feel when they actually do a um a check of themselves an examination of themselves spiritually and they're honest with themselves about the results of that examination many of them find that they are regressing or at the very least they're stagnating they're not moving forward why aren't we moving forward part of the reason is because we're anchored to another faith because our allegiance to another belief system or ritual system is holding us back we have to understand that and once we recognize that that's the first step towards what towards freeing ourselves of that anchor disconnecting ourselves cutting the string that ties us to that anchor and moving forward And so this is another reason that makes this topic that we're discussing very important. So as we said, the primary distinguishing feature of Islam is the commitment to upholding the strictest form of monotheism. That's what we've been talking about uh, these last few days, 
And this should matter to us, brothers and sisters, uh, as we recap what we discussed over the week, this being the primary thing that sets our religion apart, it should matter to us. And this mattering should be reflected in our attentiveness to Islamic monotheism. It should, and, and how does that in, attentive, what does that attentiveness look like? One, we should actively strive to learn what constitutes Islamic monotheism and also what are the violations, what are the things that constitute a violation of the strict form or the strict form of Islamic monotheism. That's how we, that's what attentiveness looks like. People will say, I'm attentive to a Tawheed. I'm attentive to monotheism. But then they don't actively learn what monotheism is and what it isn't so they can do what it is and avoid what it isn't. So then that's not real attentiveness. That's a attentiveness with the mouth, but not, a, not an attentiveness with what? With our actions. Also, also this attentiveness uh, should uh, demonstrate itself by our commitment in terms of what? Our attitude, our beliefs, and our behavior. All of them should be idolatry free. And they should be free of not just idolatry, but free of pro-idolatry sentiment. And so we can't, brothers and sisters, if we say that we're the people who are attentive to monotheism, we can be the people who have an attitude of hostility or indifference towards monotheism. If we hear the word Tawheed, for example, we hear the word Islamic mono, the phrase Islamic monotheism, uh, we become upset, we become hostile, we become aggressive towards the one who mentioned it or toward the people who are commonly known for espousing it. That's not an indication that we are attentive to a Tawheed, to a monotheism, and it's something important to us, something that we value, something we deem precious and important in our religion, in our faith. Or if we're indifferent, yeah, whatever, man. I don't, I don't need to hear about that. Whatever, man. That attitude is indicative of, of a lack of, att of attentiveness. So, again, we have to be attentive, and our attentiveness should be reflected in our attitude. Also, should be reflected in our behavior, in our beliefs. We can't have beliefs and behavior that are tainted by polytheistic beliefs and practices. So again, brothers and sisters, we can't say we're attentive. We have to show, demonstrate our attentiveness through what? Through our attitude and through our actual beliefs and practices. And so this is what I wanted to say in a, in a recap of what we spoke about uh, over this past week, just stressing and emphasizing the importance of one, we as believers in general, need to be attentive to those matters that we are observing, those beliefs that we're holding, which are foreign to Islam. And we need to understand that those things are some of the things that are holding us back. So we have to be able to look at our faith and identify, and, and identify what sets our religion apart from other religions. And if we have some of those elements of other faiths in our belief system, in our practices, we need to remove those. We need to realize that Allah wants us, us to enter into Islam completely. And that part of that, the meaning of that, is removing the influences from other faiths and the elements of other faiths from our beliefs and from our practices. And more importantly, we spoke specifically this week about the, most, the, the primary distinguishing feature of Islam being this strict commitment to upholding the strictest form of monotheism and how if we are committed, truly committed to uh, Islam, truly committed to being Muslims in the complete sense of the word, and truly committed to, making, to improving the quality of our faith and practice, then we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to be committed to this, most, to this greatest fundamental. We're gonna have to be committed to that and make sure we're removing whatever is contradictory to that from our faith, from our belief system, from our practice. And with that, brothers and sisters, we'll bring today's session to a close. But I want to remind, uh, as, we oft, as we often do on Fridays, that if you are listening to the content, if you're following the content, if you're catching up with us later on the day or later on the week and reviewing the content and find the content beneficial, kind, find the content that it is either reminding you of something you knew but kind of uh, forgot or became negligent regarding, or it is actually teaching you things that you weren't aware of or that you had not really paid attention to. If you find the content beneficial, there are probably lots of people out there who will equally find the content beneficial, but it's not reaching them. And you can help us in that regard by sharing the information. Share the information with your contacts, with your colleagues. Share it with a revert, 
that you know or share it with someone who may know a revert in another city, another town, another state, etc. Uh, I also want to um, remind everyone that inshallah ta'ala we've been talking in the past about uh, establishing a, almost a virtual community for reverts online and establishing it through uh, the humble beginnings of what we call the reverts roundtable. An opportunity for us to kind of get together and sit uh, have a topic that we're going to address together and kind of just have open discussions and almost like therapy sessions. To be honest with you, in many cases, we as reverts, we need therapy. We have been exposed to trauma in the Muslim community and we want to hold on to our faith, but holding on to faith for some of us has been a struggle. And this, this peer-to-peer therapy is something that can be really beneficial for us all. So we want to start that. We want to kick that off, inshallah ta'ala, this Tuesday, November 2nd, will be our first Reverts Roundtable. We'll be using the uh, Clubhouse platform and we'll be using uh, we're, and our first meeting will be sponsored by Muslimatic University. They have their own club and they're going to open a room for us and provide us space and opportunity to have these discussions at 8.30 p.m. this Tuesday, November 2nd. Please tune in, join us, be with us for this Reverts Roundtable and let other people know. Spread the word. We're going to be there. We're going to have like a a brief presentation or discussion uh, just to basically introduce the topic, maybe make a few points and then open the floor for us to have, you know, really beneficial dialogue and do this peer to peer therapy for each other, inshallah ta'ala. So please join us and spread the word. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak and ibn Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.